Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, Module 4, Lesson 1, Proportional Relationships and Slope. After this lesson, you need to be able to graph and compare proportional relationships using words, equations, and tables, and interpret the unit rate as the slope of the line. Let's learn proportional relationships. So proportional relationships are a big part of 6th and 7th grade. Let's review a little bit about what they are. So two quantities are considered proportional if they vary, meaning as they change, they have a constant ratio or a unit rate. The graph of a proportional relationship is a straight line through the origin, so through the point zero, zero, and relationships that have straight line graphs are also called linear relationships. So proportional relationships are linear relationships, and they can be represented using tables, graphs, words, or equations. Here we can see the different ways of representing a proportional relationship. We could just say that a relationship is proportional when the ratio of y to x gives us a constant value. Here we're using m. You might have seen in the past the letter k as the constant of proportionality. They essentially mean the same thing. We could also represent it using a table. Here we're showing that if we take our x value and multiply it by 3, we can see that we multiply it by the same thing throughout. We could use symbols saying m, our constant of proportionality, or as we go through, we'll call it the slope, is the ratio of y over x, or it might be rearranged as to y equals mx, where m is the unit rate, or again, the slope, and it cannot be equal to zero. We could graph it. Here we have a straight line through the origin. This is the graph of y equals 3x, and through all of these, they're all representing our example equation y equals 3x. An equation such as y equals 3x is called a linear equation because it makes a graph of a straight line. Notice the equation also contains more than one variable. We have both a y and an x. When we're coming up with a solution for this, it's going to consist of two numbers, one for each variable, and that will still make the equation true. And we're generally going to see it written like this, which hopefully looks familiar to you as it's going to be written as a coordinate point. Let's learn unit rate and slope. A rate of change is a rate that describes how one quantity changes in relation to another. In a linear relationship, this rate of change between any two quantities is the same throughout, which is also called constant. You're going to hear in linear relationships that they have a constant rate of change. In our example, the time to download songs is shown in the table. As the number of songs increases by two, the time in minutes increases by one. Notice every time that we download two more songs, it took one more minute. This was a constant rate of change. As we went up, the time that it took to download a song remained the same throughout. So we could figure this out as our unit rate. It was two songs in one minute. So remember, the unit rate is just how much for something in one minute of the other unit. So here it's two songs in one minute. In proportional relationships, the unit rate is the slope of the line. And this is going to be an important thing going forward. Slope is the rate of change between any two points on the line. So, so far we've had rate of change, we've had unit rate, and we're talking now about slope. All three of these things are just different names for the same thing in a linear relationship. So, when we're talking about the slope, we're generally talking about a graph, the rate of change between two points on the line. So here, let's see, we have the point 1, 2, which is down here, and 2, 4. We're still talking about the number of songs in each minute. So notice it went up two more songs, and it took one more minute. So it went up two, and one more minute passed. The slope is just the change going up and down, so it went up two more songs, and it took one more minute. Four minus two was two, two minus one was one. Again, we still get the same thing. Our rate of change was two songs per minute, and we can show no matter where we're looking, it remains the same throughout the entire situation. Example one, proportional relationships and slope. The graph shows the amount of money Ava saved over several weeks. Find and interpret the slope, then find the unit rate and compare it to the slope. Part A, find and interpret the slope. 
So to find the slope, we need to find the rate of change. We're going to choose any points on the line, such as here they're telling us 115, which is right here, and 230. We could have also chose 345, or there would be another point up here that's easy to figure out at 4 and 60. Any two points that are easily found on the line will work. Then we're going to figure out how much it changed. So in order to go from 15 to 30, how much did that go up? It went up 15. How long did that take to do it? It just was one space over from week one to week two, so one week. Our slope here is 15 over one, or just 15. And in this context, that would be $15 per week. So our constant rate of change, or slope, that we just found was 15. This means that Ava saved $15 every week. Now for part B, let's find the unit rate and compare it to the slope. So if we think about our unit rate, we can just take how much she made in a certain amount of time and divide it and see what we come up with. So if we look back at our graph here, let's use, say, this point here, 345, that we haven't used yet. She saved $45 in three weeks. So how much is she saving each week? We can just divide that. 45 divided by three is 15. She saved $15 every week. So what this means is the unit rate, she's saving $15 per week. It's the same as the slope. So as we're going through this, the slope or the rate of change, or the unit rate, again, should all be the same thing in a proportional relationship. Check your understanding. Use the graph and read through the situation to determine the correct slope. Then find the unit rate and compare it to the slope. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So first for part A, you should have said the slope is 12 over one. If we look here, Let's just go from 112 to 224. From 12 to 24, we had to go up 12. And from 1 to 2, we went over 1. So it's how much does it go up and down, which is 12 over 1. Even if we chose other points, so like say 112 and 336, this would go up 24 and over 2. 24 divided by 2 is still 12. So we got to pick the one that's shown correctly. The vertical change going up and down should be on top. 12 should be on top, which is A. For part B, comparing the unit rate and the slope. For the unit rate, we can just take one of the points. So 24 and then divide that by 2. So it's still Y divided by X. 24 divided by 2 is 12. So what does that mean? It's also 12 inches per foot, which again is the slope of the line. You should have the same thing both times. If you are getting something different and it's a linear proportional relationship, you should probably recheck what you were doing. Take time to pause and reflect. Reflect on what you've learned in previous grades. And then how do the terms rate of change and slope relate to what you already know, whether you're reminding yourself what they are or learning them for the first time. Pause the video and write down your thoughts. Example two, graph proportional relationships. The distance y in miles that a certain cyclist can ride and the time x in hours are in a proportional relationship. This can be represented by the equation y equals 12x. Graph the equation, then find and interpret the slope. So first let's graph the equation. And to do this, we're going to use a table and we can do this to create some coordinate points so that we can graph. We're given the equation y equals 12x. That means in order to figure out our coordinates, which are going to be x, y, that we can plot on our graph, if we take something and plug it in for x and multiply it out, that's going to tell us what equals y. So if we make a table for 0, 1, and 2, if we plug in 0 for x, multiply it in this case by 12, 12 times 0 is 0, so y would be equal to 0. This coordinate then, I would have 0 for x and 0 for y. I plugged in 0 for x, I got 0 out for y. If I plug in 1 for x, so I was starting to form my coordinate already, what am I going to get out for y? 
1 times 12 is 12, so y must be equal to 12. Again, my coordinate that I'm going to plot, 1 for x gave me 12 for y. If I plug in 2 for x, 2 times 12 is 24, so my coordinate would be 2, 24. And as we're graphing these, this is going to be a pretty helpful trick. Whatever you plugged in for x and whatever you got out for y is going to help you to graph and make a straight line. So next, let's graph our ordered pairs. We had 0, 0, 1, 12, and 2, 24. So 0, 0 is down here. 1, 12 would be here. And 2 hours was 24. That would be up there. So if I plugged in 0, I got 0. If I plugged in 1 for x, I got 12. 2 for x, I got 24. Once I've plotted those points, I can now connect them with a straight line as I did here. And for this situation, I should draw an arrowhead at the end showing that the line would keep going if I had more room and if I wanted to plot more points. I might not necessarily draw one in the other direction though, as that would imply that we are going both backward in time and backward in distance. Next, part B, let's find and interpret the slope. So we are given the equation y equals mx. m is the slope. So in the equation, y equals 12x, 12, that is m, that should be the slope. You can find it within the equation. It's going to be that coefficient in front of x. So in this case, the slope of the line was 12 over 1. This means that the cyclist can ride 12 miles per hour. If we wanted to go back to our graph and check, we can see from 12 to 24, I went up 12. And even though this is two squares, it's still only one hour. So it went up 12 over a change of one. So my slope there was still 12. And it doesn't ask us it here, but 12 would also be the unit rate because that is how much he can ride in one hour. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and complete both parts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So first, in part A, your graph should look like this. Be careful here, it's telling you that the slope is 200. When we're plotting though, let's say I'm plotting how I did before. So times zero, that one's easy to figure out, zero, zero. If I'm plotting times one, 200 times one is 200. How am I supposed to plot the point one 200 when it only goes up to 9. Well, if you look on the side, it tells you that it's in hundreds. So this is really 100. This is really 200. So 1 is with 200. If I plug in 2, I get 400, which is where our line should be. And then part B, which is the correct interpretation of the slope? Our slope here, we went up 200 every second that we went 1. And we can see the slope here is 200. So which one is going to show us 200? The only correct one that has 200 is D. This is not 200. This is not 200. This is close, but it's switched. This is the only one that's showing 200 beats per second. An online music store charges $3.75 for purchasing three songs. Assume the cost Y in dollars is proportional to the number of songs X. Graph this relationship on the coordinate plane, then find and interpret the slope. So part A, let's graph the relationship. So step one, find the unit rate. It tells us that $3.75 was the cost for three songs. So let's figure out how much it costs for one song. So if we do $3.75 divided by three, that means it was $1.25 for one song. So our unit rate was $1.25 per song. Next, step two, let's make a table to find the values for one, two, three, and four songs. So originally they told us three songs was 375. We just found in the unit rate, one song costs $1.25. So if I know that one song was $1.25, two songs must be twice as much, which was 250. And then if I know two songs is 250, I can double that to find four songs. So double the price must be $5. So I was able to quickly find 
the number of songs x to figure out the cost y and again we're just going to put this as a coordinate so x was the number of songs and then y is our price so as we're making coordinates to plot these i'm thinking along the lines my first number is how many songs my second number in my coordinate is the price step three let's graph the line using those coordinates that we just figured out so one song was a dollar 25 one song here's a dollar here's a dollar 50 so a dollar 25 would be about halfway between two songs was 2.5 or two dollars and fifty cents so that one's going to be right on that intersection three was 375 so three here's 350 there's about 375 and then four was five dollars so four was at five dollars so those are my plotted points and then we would need to connect it with a line in this context however we can't purchase parts of a song so like before we had our x variable was dealing with time time is continuously passing so we can draw a solid line through it to show that the time between works here we can't purchase parts of songs so instead we're going to show this with a dashed line this is indicating that those values that we had are on the line, but not everything is included. You might also see it as just a bunch of discrete points like I have here without any line at all. And that generally also shows that you cannot have the values between. Last for part B, we're going to find and interpret the slope. So since we already found the unit rate, which was $1.25 per song, we know that the unit rate is the same as the constant rate of change is the same as the slope. So the constant rate of change then would also be $1.25 per song, and then the slope would be at 1.25. And again, still meaning the same thing, it's $1.25 per song. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and complete both parts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, you should have graphed it and it should have looked like this. A manatee can swim 10 miles every two hours, so here's 10 and 2. If it's not swimming at all, it would be at 0, 0. So there's our two points we need to connect. We could also figure out 10 miles in two hours means it would be 5 miles in one hour. Our graph would look like this. And we would connect it with a solid line here since distance and time are both continuous things and we can have parts between. We could have 1.25 hours could have 1.75 hours. For part B, finding and interpreting the slope. The slope is five, because that's our unit rate. How much can the manatee swim in one hour? It can swim five miles in one hour. And if we check here, it goes up five as it goes over one. So our slope would be five over one, which is five. Let's learn, compare proportional relationships. We can use tables, graphs, words, or equations to represent and compare proportional relationships. In the equation of a proportional relationship, y equals mx, m represents our slope, which is also our unit rate or our constant rate of change. In the table, the slope is that constant rate of change or the unit rate. How much is it going up as you get one more? In a graph, the unit rate or slope is the constant rate of change or the constant ratio of y over x, which we've seen is how much does it change vertically divided by how much it changes horizontally. And then we can also find that unit rate from the point 1r telling us how much it is for one of your x value. So we have a bunch of different ways that our proportional relationships can be represented. Now let's look at comparing them. So here we can see, as we just did with our bullet points, our equation, we have our slope slash unit rate slash rate of change, it is two. Here we can see that the cost is going up by two for every one more breakfast that you buy. So again, our price per one or unit rate would be two. In our graph, we can see it's going up two for every one that it goes over. Again, our slope slash unit rate is two. Or as they mentioned in the last thing, if we figured out how much for one, what is that R value here? R is two. Here we can see our unit rate or slope in each of the different representations. 
Example four, compare proportional relationships. The distance y in miles that can be covered by a rabbit in x hours can be represented by the equation y equals 35x. The distance that can be covered by a grizzly bear is shown on the graph. Which animal is faster? Explain. So if we want to find the faster animal, we got to figure out which one is going to have the higher or greater rate of change, meaning it's covering more distance in the same amount of time, or it takes less time to cover the same amount of distance. So let's find the speed of the rabbit. We are given the equation y equals 35x. In that equation, our slope here is just the number in front of x. So it is 35. This means the rabbit was going 35 miles per hour. If we plugged in one for the number of hours, y would be 35, and that's talking about our miles. So one would be 35, the rabbit was going 35 miles an hour. For the grizzly bear, we can use a couple different ways. We're given a graph, which means that our slope or the unit rate that we want to find is the constant rate of change. It's the ratio of the vertical change over the horizontal or the point one R, which is right there. So let's look at a couple different methods to find this. First, let's use the constant rate of change. And that's what we're going to see here in the graph. The distance went up 30 miles and it took one hour to do so. So I just found the slope. It went up 30 over one, which means it went 30 miles per hour. Another method we could use is with the constant ratio. So I know that one gave me 30. In two hours, it was 60. So what is being multiplied by each time? We can just choose these points as y and x, make it into a ratio, y over x, and then divide it and simplify it. So if I pick 30 over one, that's gonna be my easiest. 30 divided by one is 30. Or I could have done 60 miles in two hours, which is still 30 over one. Either method, we find that the grizzly bear is going 30 miles per hour. A third way we can do this is using the point 1R. So that point's found right there. We find the point with one, and then whatever R is, that is our unit rate. So the Y coordinate is 30 when X equals one. That represents 30 miles per hour. We just showed three ways we can find our speed of the grizzly bear, which is our slope or our unit rate from the graph. So no matter how we did, we find the grizzly bear is 30 miles per hour. Now last, let's compare the unit rates because we want to figure out which is going faster. So we found that 35 was our speed or rate for the rabbit, while 30 was for the grizzly bear. Since 35 is greater than 30, the rabbit is the faster animal. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and determine which animal has a faster heart rate. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found that the cat has a faster heart rate. So let's look. This is our equation for the dog. So our heart rate here is 1.5 beats per second. If we're looking at the cat, we can just use this point here. I'm going to use the point 1R, meaning that 2 is the heart rate for the cat. Two is greater than 1.5, so the cat has a faster heart rate. If I wanted to use another method, it went up to every second, again, still two. If I divide y by x for any of these, I still get a unit rate of two. No matter how I figure out from the graph, two is greater than 1.5, so it has a greater slope, meaning it has a faster heart rate. Example five, compare proportional relationships. The cost Y for computer repairs at computer access for X hours is shown in the table. Macro repair charges $23.50 per hour for computer repairs. Assume that the cost is proportional to the number of hours. Which company has the lower repair cost? Explain. So this time we wanna find the lower unit rate. Let's find the unit rate for computer access since it tells us the relationship is proportional, meaning they didn't have any like extra charges if we need parts and stuff, we can look and see that it has a constant rate of change and then use that as our unit rate. 
and compare. So if we look, one more hour of work cost $25 more. If we had another hour, it was still another $25. So the unit rate for computer access must be $25 per hour. If we want to find the unit cost for macro repair, it told us in the problem, as we showed on the original screen, they're charging $23.50 per hour. Now how do they compare? Well, $23.50 is less than $25, so macro was the less one. It has the lower repair cost. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and determine which job pays more each hour. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said her new job offer is going to pay her more per hour. So she's offered the new job that's $7.95 per hour. Let's see what her old or her current job is. If we look one more hour, how much was she going up? 14 to 21 is $7, 50 cents to 75 was $7.25. If we just double check, add 25, we get our zero, zero, add seven, we'd have to get up to 29. So she's making from her current job, $7.25 per hour. So which one has more? That would be the 7.95, which was her new job. 